Alright guys, welcome to this Train Sim TV video. Today we're taking a look at something completely different to what we've ever done before and that is to look at the Polish Train Simulator, Train Driver 2. Now this one is completely different, it's something I'd never actually heard of until a, a chap called IRC mentioned in our comments that there's a, when I was doing the Simulator video that there is a, a Polish multiplayer train simulator out there. And uh, lo and behold this is it. I uh, looked at some videos by Fluffy Armchair Admiral on YouTube and he's done some great videos on this simulator and uh, I thought I'd come and check it out. So everything you can see on the, on the screen at the minute whilst I'm talking, these are actual players driving these other trains that you can see. Our train is that one on the left there, that EPO7. And we're currently just sat in these sidings waiting to get out of the uh, main line. So what is Train Driver 2? Now Train Driver 2 is a free, that is the keyword, it is free a free Polish railway simulator. Um, it's completely online. You can do it offline if you want, but there's not really much to do with it. You sort of need to be online really to make the most of it. Um, and what it lacks in graphics, as you can see, is not exactly in the same league as such as TSW and even TS Classic to some extent. It more than makes up for the natural immersion and simulation aspect in terms of, you can actually see there, you know, we've got the freight here going through with an ET-71 on, we've got the passenger train passing in the other direction. And all these have actually been signalled by a person in an actual signal box. You can see at the top of the screen there, the chap called Black Moon. He's actually in the signal box controlling all this, and you can see him physically stood in the signal box as well. That's how sort of cool this really is. You did see a little bit of lag there. Now, that is about the worst lag I've actually seen whilst playing this. But, you know, for the most part, it doesn't really seem to have much lag. Uh, what we're going to do on this is just take a 30 minute low cord run down the line and uh, see what happens on the way, uh, mostly. Um, you know, some interesting stuff on these working, so it's worth doing. The way you can tell this online, by the way, is somebody who's gone and undone a Tom look, he's left all his doors wide open. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite a lot to this game and it's, it's very fun. I've really been enjoying it since Christmas. I've literally not been able to stop playing. I've driven over 600 kilometres. Um, and that's the best thing about this, it is a lot of things to do. Now, the way it does it is pretty unique. It's completely different to such as TS Classic and TSW, where you'll drive a set route. The way that Train Driver 2 does it is they have multiple sceneries. So, I'm not sure exactly how many they have, but it's well over 70 sceneries. Now, a scenery can be 5 to 10 miles long, uh, some shorter, some longer. And... What happens is a dispatcher, such as, as you can see at the top of the screen, Black Moon, will load into one of those stations, which then makes it active. And you can then spawn at that active station. You will then drive from there, and when you get to the end of that section of scenery, you will then load in another section of scenery. Now, it could be a different section of scenery each time. It's not a set route. So you load in a second piece of scenery, and the way and the reason to do this is so that you're always driving with other people and you're always driving it under dispatcher control. You never... So let's just say they had a 500 kilometer set route, for instance, with SimRail, that's what we're going to have. What happens when the dispatcher is either too busy or not able to cope or is not there? What happens when you go into the next section and there's no actual dispatcher there? Well, with this, you don't have to worry about that because you permanently go from one scenery to the next scenery, which is also under dispatcher control. So you permanently move around. Now... Some of these dispatchers, they use the sort of computerised signalling systems. They don't use block instruments and stuff like that. But some of them do actually use semaphores and you physically see them moving the levers and the semaphores have got sounds and everything and all this stuff. We don't actually pass any in this run, but we will do in a future video because I'll make sure we go to some of those places. They're obviously less common than these fully electrified stations and stuff, but there are some really cool sort of um, non electrified and electrified semaphore stations, and the way it all works is fantastic. It's fully interlocking and everything. And the immersion that I felt with the simulator is actually more than I've ever felt, I think, with you know, some TS Classic stuff and TS, TS World, certainly. But um, the signaling operation, the way it all links together, the fact that you're actually interacting with real people is amazing. Now, this simulator really hasn't got that much coverage. There's not been many English-speaking people have done it. I know, big, you know, big shout out to Fluffy Armchair Admiral because he is the guy that has done quite a lot of videos on it. And please do check his channel out because he'll show you how to get playing this game, and that's where I learned. Um, 
you check his channel out, you can actually learn a lot about it. Um, but I'm going to obviously do some videos as well at some point, but please do check his stuff out because he's done some really, really good stuff. So you can see here we're currently in Arniki Station. We're just watching as um, this guy comes in here and uh, opens his doors. He's got he's waiting for the right away now. We've come out of the sidings so and we've got a dispatcher. Con uh, the dispatcher is talking in that chat up there, the text in red. Um, he keeps talking to me. My train number is 15151. He keeps addressing me, telling me what to do and stuff. We had about a 15 minute wait at the start of this scenario to actually come out, well, scenario session to actually come out of the yard and get into the station and set up and everything because we had to wait for the road we had to wait for our path into the station once we've got the path into the station we then get given a timetable so the dispatcher was asked for a timetable i gave him what i call what you call an analysis so your analysis is your class of train your class of loco your type of train which is a it for me is a local or it's a regional passenger train basically and basically what we're doing then is we get given a timetable which is what you can see up there in the right hand corner now we've got a really short timetable and that's ideal for doing a video on but some of them you can get a, a really sort of big timetable it's like one i had the other night was four hours long and it was like over 150 kilometers now that unfortunately i had to cape at like 65 minutes late or something because it was all sorts of things were going wrong with me mainly because i kept overloading the loco um but some of them are really short, some of them are really long, you can choose what you want to do. There's freight um, workings, there's passenger workings, there's an awful lot of Owen stock included, especially when you consider it's free, there's an awful lot of stuff included. Now we've just seen those other trains come in, and we've waited whilst the train that was in the far platform has actually gone ahead of us. What we're doing now is we're waiting for the signal. Now as cool as you actually see the signal, the bulbs changing as one's fading, the others are lighting up. We get the right away. We can then depart. We're going to grab our Miasto. I'm totally going to murder these pronunciations, but that's where we're going to be going. And um, we'll have an interesting run up on the way up there. Our train is limited to 125 kilometres an hour, so we can get up to a decent speed with this run. That's about, so I want to say about 80 odd mile an hour, I think. I'm not entirely sure because I don't have the conversion time, but it's about 80 odd mile an hour. To be honest, you don't really get to see that speed that often but uh, you'll find that some modes have got stuff like temporary speed restrictions and stuff like that on so you, you're always sort of getting different um, runs, you never get the same thing and obviously because it's online it's forever different, you never come on and get the same scenario you never come on and get the same things happening, you never have to worry about making a scenario you just come on and ask dispatcher for a timetable, give him your details of your train, your train length, your train weight, your train height, maximum speed because I'm thrown into the box there um, give it all that information give the dispatcher all that information and away you go, he'll find you a timetable she'll find you a timetable uh, and away you go, you're straight off down the line so we're departing here from or Nikki. I will be going quiet in a few minutes just so you guys can enjoy the, uh, the ride basically but this loco is really fun to drive it's really difficult to drive if you don't drive it right because you can easily overload it and that's what i've been doing a lot i don't do it in this scenario thankfully but i have been doing it a lot but uh you know you can really have fun driving this loco it's sort of like a tap changer it's the body shape of these i believe is actually based on the class 83 um they run on dc power so they're not obviously the same internal electrical but the way the work is quite similar to a tap change you can see the amps jumping up and down there so I'm stopping that from hitting 600 amps if it gets to 600 we've got a problem because that's when it's going to overload so you've got to be really careful uh, doing that and uh, we're just going to the speed restriction here You see the engineers working at the side of the line. Now we've got this restriction through here, and then we can crack on. We've got two stops on this working, we've got the one in the middle, and then we've got the final stop at Grab Round Miasto. 
Now, the dispatcher at Grab Hour was actually really cool on this day. Um, he let me actually shunt the log off the train and he shunted the stock for me. So, usually you just get to get to the end of your run and you leave or you can ask for a new timetable and stuff like that. But the guy this day was actually really cool and he, he asked me if I wanted to uncouple the loco and stay boy basically. So, you'll see that in this video, that's quite fun. And there's some other little um, things that happen in this that it almost make it feel like a real railway. So, it's, it's really good. As you can see, the scenery style is not exactly TS Classic or TS World like. <laughs> to be honest, I think it looks quite good though. I don't really have any real qualms about it. You can see there's a bit of loading stutter there. Now, that is because we're loading the next scenery. Usually, you don't really get that many stutters, you get the odd one. This is actually probably the most I've had. Now, bear in mind, you don't get these like every mile, you get these like once every 5 10 miles sort of thing. This is quite a bad one. Um, Normally you could probably get two stutters and it's done, but maybe it's because I was running the Streamlabs software at the time, I don't know, but uh, otherwise, I mean, frame rate, as you can see, is, is really steady. I don't have a count on the screen, but it's certainly well above 50 most of the time. Um, and it's it's like that all the time, really. There's not really any point where it's dropping badly or anything like that. So what we're doing now is we've left that original server that we were in. We've left the original server, we're now loading into the next server. Now that is the big stuff that I got there. But yeah, we've now loaded into the next server with this uh, Polish chap as the dispatcher. Now, I've not really seen any British people many, much playing this game. I've seen about four or five British drivers. All the controls I've seen have been Polish or German. There's only a couple of German ones I've seen. Now, as you can see in the chat, most of them do actually speak really good English. They're really, you know, you're not really having to worry about people speaking Polish and stuff like that. To be honest, they speak better English than me most of the time. Um, I've only had two, I think, where I've not had them speaking English, which has not been a problem because most of the things that they say, uh, they sort of repeat and it's the same sort of things as you go along. It's either wait at signal, entry given to station, exit given from station, change cab, stuff like that. You can sort of easily translate it if you need to, but I've only had two occasions where I've had to do that. So it's not really a problem at all. Um, and I really would not let that put you off playing. The thing I would say is just drive around a little bit in, in a single player first before you actually come to play online. If you want to play this online, you know, it's, if you're not going to play online, I probably won't bother with it. I think you need to be playing this with the idea of getting it online. Um, well, make sure you check out the wiki and stuff for the, the game on their website, on the TD2 website. I'll link the wiki in the description. You can learn an awful lot from that. And as I said before, do check out Fluffy Armchair Admiral's channel because he has got a lot of videos on this simulator that you can really learn a lot from. Now, I'm going to be quiet for a bit now just so you guys can sort of enjoy the ambience of the game for a bit. So, enjoy what you're watching guys. I'll come back as we get towards the next stop and I'll uh, want to chat a bit more.
We're now coming down to uh, this uh, station here. Just what's happening here is we've been given a instruction from the dispatcher. We've been told we're going to cross over, so we've got the train down to a safe speed. You can see we're crossing over now. You can actually see the signalman up there in the uh, box. He's looking for the window. Just to uh, see him then as we're approaching, but. Uh, it's really cool to sort of see how they've actually done that. It's not just like somebody looking at a computer screen somewhere. It's physically they're watching what you're doing, which is a great thing. It can also be a bad thing if you sort of like don't do everything they want you to do. They'll, they'll tell you. Um, I found, to be honest, though, that they've all been really patient. There's only been maybe two dispatches where they're just a little bit sort of quick and expecting a lot of you when you may be just trying to learn. Every other one that I've had, particularly right at the start when I first went on, and I said, look guys, well I said, look guys, I said, hello, it's my first, you know, my first run, could you just give me something simple to do? Uh, and the dispatcher was really, really good to me, he just gave me some really simple timetable, and he was really patient with me when I changed in cab and stuff like that. Now the key to that is make sure if you're in your first time playing that you spawn somewhere where really there is nobody. Spawn where it's quiet, spawn away from people, spawn on the screen when it says there's a, you know, you can see how many people are that, in that area spawn where there's just one person for instance don't spawn where there's 10 people because the dispatcher's not going to have time to sit there and hold your hand if he's also got a nine trains to control um this is pretty quiet at the moment i came on at a fairly quiet time of day now we saw quite a lot of trains back at Arniki, but now we're sort of finding it's pretty quiet um we'll soon head towards grab and that is where the uh, route will finish our timetable will finish and i will shut off the train but yeah, we're, we're just steadily going along at the moment. And uh, we've got a red signal up ahead. That's why we're sort of taking it very, very steadily. And uh, once we've gone through, obviously, here, we'll uh, speed back up again. I think we've got to stop coming up soon as well, which is probably why we're going so slow. But obviously, if you're following another train and stuff, the signal and the accident is a, as you would expect, and you have to follow uh, as, a, as the dispatch will let you. Quite often you'll find, especially if you're on a freight, you'll get looped for you know decent lengths of time. Uh, so if you're going, you're going to be wanting to do a quick now, don't do a freight basically because you'll probably get looped a few times. You have to wait for expresses and stuff. Even some of the expresses, you sometimes get held a couple of times, and well, the regional passengers you get held a couple of times. The expresses you generally get a fast run, but you need to know what you're doing with those express runs. Now there is no physical hood on this simulator like there is in conventional TS. There is a hood of sorts, it's on the left there at the bottom, you can see that, that we've got the power is the far left one. The one next to that here has got the little amp gauge there. I'm using the ones in the cab though, the ones in the middle of that line of yellow gauges. Um, and then you've got what, well I don't know what it's called, but it's like a gear change between the 1 to 6 on the left hand side. When you go to 60 km an hour, basically you notch the gears up so you can get more power at lower uh, and amps to the loco to gain up to your top speed 125 uh, kilometers an hour. Now we're taking the diverging view here. This is where we obviously head off towards grab out my ass down. It's a bit of single track line that we have to go on. And there's a, there's a passing loop along here where we'll pass another train, which is quite cool. And obviously we actually get the right away this time, but quite often you'll be the one that gets held. And it's really impressive to sort of see somebody come out of the, around the corner and pass them and be a real person. It's pretty cool. And I just, you know, I wish we had it in TS and stuff like that. But you know, it's really cool to actually be able to do it. Um, so yeah, we're heading along the single track. We are now on jointed track as well. Um, in terms of the other things on the hood, you can see I've got the brake gauge over there on the far right. So you can see what we're doing, the brakes, the brake meter to tell me what setting them on. The brake gauge itself is that one of the circular dials, it's the one on the left. That is my brake gauge, if that's on zero, and the brakes are released. Uh, speed wise that's at the top if you've got a speed limit coming up it'll tell you if you've got a signal coming up essentially it'll tell you that you've got not kilometer an hour limit in x amount of meters again i'm going to be quiet now while you can enjoy this uh, run towards grab our master
So we're on the outskirts of Grabow now. We've got up to this passing loop. I'm just toning because you can see the chap on the track here. He's actually uh, the driver of that other train. He's come to say hello. And uh, I think the signal was in the box here as well. So we have a... I think it's here we have a different sort of signal. Um, we have a flashing aspect. Now it's called a substitute signal. You can see that the dispatcher actually told me about it. So what the dispatcher's told me there is that there's a problem with the block, the you know, his actual physical block instrument has got a problem with it. So we had to depart here on what we call the substitute signal, like the equivalent of the shunt signal on the British Railway network. And uh, that's another little bit of immersion there that adds to the fact that you feel that you're on a real railway. Because you can see, I was just, just coming along there, you can see sort of like things like the chimneys, draw distance, you can see them appearing in and, and stuff in the distance. That is the only real negative of this, is that obviously graphically it's just not able to be in the same ballpark as TS and TSW. Although I think it depends a lot on your opinion. I mean, personally, I prefer this to TSW because of the way TSW works. I just don't like the graphics on it sometimes. Um, but I think it makes up for that in the performance side of things because it does perform generally really nicely. Um, and also the sounds and everything, I think they're reasonably good. I mean, for a free game, they're absolutely fantastic. I think they're otherwise they're pretty decent. There's obviously the odd bits where you can hear it looping, but for the most part, it's more than good enough. Um, it's, it's pretty decent. And when it's all added together, for me, it makes a really impressive sort of um, immersive simulation. Particularly on the operation side, because they've got done, done so much research and, and stuff into how it actually operates. Uh, saying there's a total novice to one's Polish operation, but it seems to me like they've got it pretty much nailed down. Um, it's really impressive to see how it's all done. And I found everyone that's been on it really, really friendly as well. And you see, I'm actually talking in the chat here with this this, this batch of Berenzak. Uh, he's going through it all with me. And what he wants to do is meet on a couple of the loco and we'll shunt off and stuff like that. You can actually see him in the SM42 diesel loco on the left hand side as we come up in the set. But uh, yeah, we did some really cool shunting moves here. And uh, I came back an hour later and actually came back and collected my train, so that was really fun as well. We shunted it out into this hiding spot. In terms of what stock you actually get with the game, you get loads of wagons and coaches, you get you know, a ton of those. Locos wise, you get so you get individual locos within a class, so there's like loads of each one. But the classes you get are the EN57, you get the EN71, they're multiple units. You get a little diesel multiple unit, which I forget what it's called. You get the little diesel loco there, the SM42, which is a little bit like a class 14 sort of thing, looking at it. Uh, a bit like those German shunters as well. Um, you get the EU07, which is what we're driving here. Now you get some with different cab variants. This is a modern looking cab, where you get some with an older looking cab. You get the I think it's the EUA, EP07 and the EP08. Um, and you also get the ET71 freight locomotive. So you get a, a decent amount of stuff included with it. And they do keep adding bits and bats here and there as well. So you can see the signal box here as we're coming along. The chap is controlling this from that box. You can actually see him stood again in the window watching to see what I'm doing. And as we continue our conversation in the chat there. So I'll leave you to it, I'll let you just watch the last few minutes of this video, we'll hook up and we'll head off to the side and then it'll end. And uh, thanks very much for watching. I would recommend checking it out, I think it's worth checking out. I would say uh, have a look at Fluffy Arm Child Moss channel before you do because there's a lot of stuff to learn with it. Don't step into it thinking you can just load up and go because you'll not get anywhere and they are pretty strict if you're messing about and stuff like that. Um, so I'm told anyway. You know, it's quite a strict operation so Go into it with the, no, you know, the notion to learn and take it all in and accept that you're going to have to set aside a lot of time to actually learn the damn thing because you know, I had to do probably five hours learning before I even got on. I only did about an hour's driving before I went into multiplayer but the learning side of it, the signalling, how the thing operates, how, how I put an analysis into the game, stuff like that. Uh, and just remember to be polite to the guys that's running it, you know, it's pretty simple really, it's, you know, it's not difficult. But I found that the um, 
good manners and everything go a long way and she's been you know gen gen generally decent to him. I think it was really good uh, and I've had no problems at all really with it so yeah hope you've enjoyed the video guys cheers as always for watching please don't forget to drop a like and subscription to our channel and uh, don't forget Tom's usually live he, he might even drive this online one day on, tw on twitch that's twitch.tv underscore train sim tv and um I just murdered that completely, I think, my, uh, the, the HTC people, anyway. Um, yeah, I think it's probably he's going to stream this at some point. I'll probably get banned after five minutes because it's bad to go against your record, but, yeah. Cheers, guys. See you in a bit. Bye.